Hi, my name's Paul Ludwig, and we're going to be talking about the CAM portion of our 3D Experience platform. We've been working on this carving knife, and now we're ready to begin machining the mold. Everything has been done up until this point, so I just have the one task that I'm assigned right now. I'm going to go ahead and switch that over to in work and give it some sort of a percentage here so I'm communicating with my team on how far I am on this project. Once I've updated my tasks, I can go ahead and access my different apps. In this particular case, I've been assigned the NC Shop Floor Programmer role. That gives me access to Shop Floor Machining. I'm going to go ahead and open this app. Now we are inside of our Delmia Shop Floor Machining app. One of the things I like about this is that I can have a manufacturing cell already set up. I have my machine loaded with full kinematics. I also have some catalogs with all the tools that I have already preloaded in this manufacturing cell. I can then reuse this manufacturing cell over and over again. In this particular case, I made a carving knife project and I inserted my manufacturing cell. At this point, I can then go ahead and bring in the product that I want to machine. In this particular case, it's going to be the cordless handle half uh, that's already been provided me from the rest of the team. So I'm going to go ahead and import, and I get this great search bar. That means that I can come up here, I can type in anything I want and do some searches. If I already happen to have the part open like I do, I can simply just access it by selecting on it and it will insert it right in the bottom of my machining cell that I already have set up. I'm then going to move this into position on the table. I have predefined a work coordinate system and a work holding coordinate system already inside of my manufacturing cell. So I'm going to go ahead and move this component into position here. I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of my wizard on the right hand side. I'm going to mount and import resources and just select the object that I want to machine here and I'm going to be able to move it into position. I'm going to take advantage of the coordinate system that I already have set up here. And then I'm going to take advantage of the port that I set up for the workpiece. It's going to again go ahead and mount this into position. I could do a couple other things here as well. There's other resources and things that I can mount. So if I had some fixtures or other items, I can mount them here at this same time. Once I'm finished, I can get out of this command and I can move on to the part operation uh, portion of the wizard. In this case, I want to identify my rough stock. So I'm going to zoom in here, activate this command. and go ahead and select my stock. Now in this case, I'm just pocketing it out uh, for the mold and also uh, a little space for the runner here. So I'm just gonna keep it the exact same size as the block that I already had. I can now set this up to take advantage of having my stock and my part in here. I'm gonna go ahead and select what is representing what. In this particular case, I have my rough stock here I'm going to select that model as my rough stock. It will now change from the coral to the green. I can also leverage in my action pad turning that off so that now I can make the selection for the actual part. And I'm just kind of telling the software what's what inside of here so it's going to make my entire machining process a little bit easier. I also can leverage a safety plane in here. One of the things I like about this is that I can just jump this plane up a little bit above the part. So it's kind of giving myself like a retract uh, type of plane there. Once that's done, I am good to go. And then I'm just going to continue going down and leveraging the wizard. The next portion is to actually set up some programming. Um, I have my wizard on the right that I've mentioned a couple times here. I also have this toolbar across the bottom. And it's got a couple tabs for the different types of machining. 
they kind of are linked. So if I pick Prismatic Machining in my whole wizard, it's going to switch to that appropriate tab. If I go to my Surface Machining, it's going to select that. So just by hovering over, I'm able to make those changes. So a lot of times what I like to do is just go right down into the machining tabs and start the machining process. Let's start out by machining the pocket for the material entry into our mold. So we're going to do a basic prismatic machining pocket here. I'm going to take advantage of the catalog that I mentioned before. So when I'm doing my tool selection, I'm going to be able to grab any tools that I have listed in the catalog already. In this case, we'll use a half inch flat end mill. Now that I have the tool selected, I need to move on to the next uh, selection phase to get my programming going. And you notice that I get this nice little feedback right up top, bright orange uh, bottom it's looking for for the pocket. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this surface right here, and that will become my pocket. Now, over on the left-hand side, I get my great dialog box for pocketing one. In this case, the bottom guide and tool axis are already selected. They have a beautiful green check mark next to them. Anything else that I want to interact with, I can then highlight. So if I want to worry about an island or something like that, I can just check the box over on the left. In this case, we have a full pocket. Um, the bottom's going to be a hard type pocket. The other, the other selection would be soft, you know, if it was a through pocket or something like that. We also have offset on hard and soft boundary. In our case, very similar to what we see in SolidWorks a lot, everything has a hard boundary. So let's go ahead, modify the guide a little bit, and make some changes. We know that we're open on the two ends, so I'm going to go ahead and swap the hardness here and I can make these other two selections soft and then I can give it a uh, offset on the boundary I want it to go maybe five millimeters past maybe two three whatever the number is go ahead and type in a negative number and that's going to give me the offset now down at the bottom I have a couple uh, buttons display is one that I really like because it allows me to display that toolpath immediately so I'm gonna go ahead and hit display it's going to kind of generate what toolpath I'm going to be looking at, and I get that right on screen there. If that's what I like, great. I can go ahead and accept that. For the next part of setting up our operations, we're going to machine the inside of this pocket here. All right, let's start out. I'll do some roughing, and then we'll come in and do some finishing. So the roughing is actually pretty sweet. I'm going to turn on my stock so that we can see both. I'll come down to surface machining and just select roughing. Now that I'm inside my roughing dialog box, I need to identify the part and the rough stock. That's the easiest way to get this in here. So I identify the, the part. If I have any issues with selection, I can turn off my rough stock, select the part, and then maybe turn that back on. Once I have that selected, I'll get my green check mark. I'm also going to go ahead and highlight some rough stock here. So in this case, I could turn the part off and just select my rough stock. Once I have both of these selected, I can also go right to this display option and take a look at what kind of toolpath I've created here. All right, so we have something going on. I'm not a big fan of it. Um, lots of green, that's our little toolpath areas, so my step over is probably a little, um, a little conservative, I, I guess I would say. So let's go ahead and make some couple changes in here. So along with these basic selections I have, the nice one right here, we're going to go our axial depth of cut. That's set to 0.5 millimeters, which is uh, uh, very conservative when you're roughing. We could be a little bit more aggressive. We're using a half inch tool here. So maybe I want to set this to something like five. 
and then hit display and we'll check our roughing out. So that looks a little bit better. We just want to come in and rough it. We don't want to be too cute with it. So um, th this is a great way to get that done inside of here. Once I like what I have, I could go ahead and accept that. Now the next portion that we need to be concerned about is our finishing. So we're going to go ahead and do some advanced finishing for inside of this pocket here. I've identified my part. My tool axis is set up automatically. Uh, straight up and down the way I want it based upon my machine settings and now I could go ahead and make these other selections in this particular case I want to use a limiting contour that's basically going to be the edges of the pocket that I'm going to be machining in the three axis realm here so I'm going to go ahead and start making these selections it's pretty straightforward I check the box and then I come in and start making the selections Now that I have all my edges selected, I can close that contour up with a lot straight line here. And that basically is going to be that guide or those limiting contour that I want for that pocket. Same sort of selections that I have in here. A little bit different because I'm doing finishing instead of the roughing that I had. One thing I do want to do is that I've been using that half inch flat end mill uh, to machine everything else out. I want to come in with, uh, you know, a smaller ball mill, maybe a quarter inch here, and I can make that change while I'm inside of here. And again, I'm going to go back to my catalog. I already have everything loaded inside of this machining cell. So I basically am just reusing what I have already set up. Makes it very quick and easy. All right, now I have everything set up that I want. I could go ahead and do another display here to get a quick look at the toolpath. Right, if I like that toolpath, great. If I want to make more changes, I can do that as well. In this particular case, I can go right over to my strategy and make some changes on the setting. I have my machining tolerance. I also have my sloping and vertical passes for my constant step over so if I want to increase my surface finish maybe I'll change these to like two millimeters for horizontal and vertical passes maybe 90 degrees on my uh, max horizontal slope and then I can go ahead and hit display again to take a look at what sort of tool path I'm going to get on that so that looks a little bit nicer closer to what I'm looking for um, Again, I could go through and continue to tweak things to kind of perfect it, but uh, you know, this is a kind of a complicated surface, so um, I do like the tool pass that I'm getting for now, even with a couple extra retracts in there. Now that I have my tool pass all set up, over on the left hand side, I could see the tool I'm using the operations that are going to be using that tool, and then I have the tool change along with the finishing operation at the end. I can want to go ahead and simulate this now right inside of the 3D Experience platform. Once I have the simulation executed, I'm going to go ahead and hit play, and we're going to get to see the entire machine kinematics going on here so if I wanted to zoom in I could see it making the cuts I can also turn on the tool pass if I want to view the cuts as it's coming through and doing the roughing if I turned on my stock I would get to see that as well but lots of different little settings you could do to make it uh, look the way that you're um, looking to get that feedback and again here full machine kinematics full three axis tool pass I'm able to do my roughing and my finishing all of this is included right inside of the Delmia shop floor programmer now that I've successfully completed my programming work I'm gonna go ahead and update my task 
I can move this all the way to 100 and go to completed and go ahead and hit save. And that is the CAM portion of the 3D Experience platform leveraging the shop floor programmer role and using shop floor machining to successfully program the carving knife mold.